spin Great flies. Green. Away goes McLaughlin. Boy, McLaughlin waited till the last possible second to get on the throttle, but it pays off with a jump into turn one. Three wide grim rail on the inside, sandwiching. It looks like Jack Harvey and Renus VK makes that move work. Now side by side down into turn 10. Everybody tiptoeing right now. Good start by Alex Pillow in that blue NTT Data Honda. Moves are happening. It's Scott Dixon in the orange and blue car. Behind him, his teammate. The winner from a year ago, Marcus Ericsson, through. We, we talked about the aggression for Marcus Ericsson. It's control, but he's getting moves done. Now on the back of Rena's VK is Jack Harvey's trying to defend side by side from the AJ Foy camp. They touch. That's Dalton Kellett and Kyle Kirkwood. Teammates come together. It looks like Kellett got the short end of that stick. A few other cars gone by. Felix Rosequest, Alexander Rossi on hey, a charge. Jump. And here comes Colton Herter. Herter's just a couple of cars further back. Meanwhile, that looked like Joseph Newgarden losing a spot to David Malukas. I think you're right. A little bit of a lockup from the 27th side by side. Devil D. Francesco on the inside of Takuma Sato. Jimmy Johnson trying to make a move back there. Look at, Look at this. <laughs> that is a one groove piece of racetrack. I that just, was a smart move to get out of it. I just love Nashville, Diff. When yeah. you're seen racing on one half, racing <laughs> on the other half, it's tough to keep track of all the action as things start to spread out up front. The biggest mover so far at this stage has been Marcus Erickson, but we're hearing that race control has reviewed the start and the defending race winner here of the big machine music city grand prix may have to give as many as two positions back i saw him outside trying to get a jump and it looked like it might have been a little too early as we take a look at the replay here james on the left hand side of the screen that red and white car is marcus erickson and you are not supposed to jump out of the column that you are in before that green flag that was a oh, Herda has trouble second year in a row that colton herda finds the wall at nashville Started 23rd. Be careful coming back in. That's the voice of his dad, Brian. Started 23rd, knew, and he told us that he had to be aggressive. He had to go for passes to make his way through this field. What happened? Down into turn four, he's got Dalton Kellett on the inside and just, oh, contact with the four, pushes him wide, gets into the tire barrier. From on board, now you see the push to pass lit up. You see the green dots on the side of the dash. He's on the overtake. 150 seconds allowed here at Nashville. And Dolan just not willing to give the position up. But man, that is a tight corner to go side by side through. Problems for Alexander Rossi here. He had just pitted, got onto the primary tires. On. And here's the first caution yeah, of the day. Gone. Looks like, like turn 10. The and let's take a, a look here and see if we can Identify, so you see it lock up, but normally it should just fire itself again. So Alexander Rossi finally finds pit road. And that's he's there for the second time. Unfortunately, like his teammate Colton Herder, went down a lap. They're ready to roll. Here we go. Back to racing. The accordion effect nearly caused some damage there. Of cars getting into each other. Looking at three wide. Scott Dixon here. Good and restart. Jack Harvey in that red high V machine. Oh, David Maluk has taken a pass from uh, Joseph Newgarden, who he had got around earlier. That opens the door for Simon Pagano to go by the 18 as well. Now Will Powers trying it side by side in 10. Renus VK back there has been really aggressive on the start and restart. Here comes Will Power up the inside of David Malukas. Championship leader on the move. Nice work. This is Graham Rahal. Just have to really tiptoe through that turn one and two section. It is so tight through there. Nice restart, Scott McLaughlin. He's already been able to stretch his legs and pull away a little bit from Romain Grosjean. Grosjean's under pressure from Polo. Pato Award, Christian Lundgaard, then Joseph Newgarden. Pato Award got around Christian Lundgaard on that restart. So another spot lost for the Dane. Still running inside the top five highest rookie. But it's all Scott McLaughlin up front as Roman Grosjean's got to fight back a little bit of pressure from Alex Pillow here. Delio Castro Neves in the 06, the highway car there. No, it's not running. Looks like the exit of turn three there. I wonder if he just lost it on the power. You can see the crossover skid marks there. And this is what happened to the four time Indianapolis 500 winner. He's being chased by Rossi and just loses it by himself. Alex Pillow gonna lead, and Jimmy Johnson gonna restart on a street circuit in second place. And Jimmy had made up a number of positions earlier in the race, so he was having a good run in the Carvana 
Honda. He's up there with his teammate. Let's see how this one works. Ready to go back to racing. Watch for the green. There it is. Let's go. Green, 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 green. Big jump from Alex Pelot. You see Simon Pagano there trying to line up Jimmy Johnson side by side behind him into turn nine. A little bit of tire smoke. Christian Lundgaard. Big lock up from Lundgaard. And that's Pato Award on the inside in that orange and black arrow McLaren Chevy. I'm, I'm not sure you didn't get damage done to that left or the right front, oh. sorry, for Lundgaard. Look at this for a move. Award on Lundgaard, and Ray Hall's in the mix in the United Rentals Honda. See a lot of tiptoeing. The Firestone Blacks still not up to temperature. They're too wide through the left-hander. Big wiggle from Roman Grosjean getting into there. That's going to give an opportunity of maybe getting past. We see ECR cars swerving, trying to find a gap so hard into turn one. Felix Rosenquist putting himself in the mix. There's Renus VK ahead of Marcus Ericsson. The white and red car right there, the Husky Chocolate Honda. Guys, I'm, I'm still thinking about that front tire, the left front. Oh, David Maluka's on the inside of Jimmy Johnson. Huge move into turn Almost four. looked like Jimmy Johnson about lost it coming off the bridge in the brake zone there as the rear steps out for Malukas. Everybody on the same strategy except Jimmy Johnson. He will likely have to stop two more times to get to the end as, oh, uh -oh. Graham Rahal has contact. Oh, and Pato Award is there as well. This is going to bring out a caution. This will be the third on the day. This is in turn seven. Looks like the contact would have happened one turn ago in turn six. Graham Rahal had an issue there in practice. Both cars still running, but the caution does fly. Oh, way more drama. Dalton Kellett, Callum Eilat. I think the track might be blocked. You see Callum Eilat there Simona stopped the head. Oh, That's Castro Neves. That is turn six. That is the tightest corner on everybody. the racetrack. Very tight, blind entry, severely downhill on the exit. Easy to lose the front end of the car there. We see the 77 in the tire barrier. And look at the damage to the Uni United Rentals number 15 car for Graham Rahal. These two guys were putting on quite a display of racing. These two guys being um, Graham Rahal and Pato Award. We will find out what happened when we see some replays, but they were right well and truly in the mix, not any longer. Cautions breed cautions. We saw the feverish activity back in the field for everyone trying to make up some ground. It's interesting, we can hear the Chevy engine in the number five car running, but it's not able to go anywhere. The car has no drive. Car has no drive, and this is, one, this is one of the championship contenders. Pato Award is one of the championship six. Check this out. Talk about smoking the greens here. Graham Rahal's got the front wing underneath the chassis. That, that is a bizarre sight. So here's the replay. Look at the top of your screen. So Will Power gets sideways, slows down Pato Ward, who loses the drive. Graham Rahal's already done the damage to his front wing, but further back, there's another blockage unrelated to these two. Let's see what happened here. Oh, Graham Rahal actually hit Pato Award into Will Power. That's what caused Will to, that explains the loss of drive from Pato Award, the gearbox at the back of the oh, car there. Same issue here. That's Pato's view as Graham Rahal got into him. He got into Will Power. And Rahal just fighting it to try to get back and loses it there over the bridge as the front wing is just firmly lodged underneath the car. So here's on board with Jack Harvey. Look it back. You can see it comes to a near stop. Scott Dixon gets hit. How does Kalamila? Oh, Kalamila just stalls. Stalled. In the traffic jam, sort of caused by the initial impact between Graham Rahal and Pato Award, it just backed everybody up. Oh, here's Graham. That front wing just stuck there, and it's like riding on a skateboard without wheels. We are getting ready to go back to racing. It's Alex Pillow and Simon go, go, Pagano, go, 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 and then rookie green, David green, Malukas. Green. Here we go. There's a rookie in. Kyle Kirkwood working hard on Jimmy Johnson. He's got an inside run and gets him. Joseph Newgarden trying to make it three wide into turn nine. Thinks better of it. A little contact. We see Rossi Callum and Eilat. Callum Eilat get together. Go to the runoff. Eilat with a flat right rear. He pulls off the track. Rossi continues. Oh, got driven into. McLaughlin lights it up in the decks. Devlin, Chevy. Devlin DeFrancesco looks like is in the wall up in turn 10. Oh, there yeah. it is. Takuma Sato. Sato involved in that as well. That will bring out yet another caution. Guys, this looks like Nashville all over again. I hate to say it. Into turn 10, you see Devlin DeFrancesco, Takuma Sato at the top of your screen. They go out. Of Sato was trying to make the move to the outside of that corner. Didn't get a great view of it.
green flag waves. Simon Paginot doing what he did before and he's not letting him get away. Who's making the moves? Rinas VK up the inside. Big lock up from Simon Paginot and that allows the rookie Malukas to have a look. I'm pretty sure Paginot got to the back of the number 10 car. Alex Pelot was able to hang on. Here comes McLaughlin in that red and white Team Penske car. Nice defensive positioning from David Malukas there. Not getting bullied around by Scott McLaughlin, but Here now McLaughlin tries into 11. They touch. Malukas defense getting very aggressive. Now it's the two rookies, Malukas and Foyt running nose to tail. That was a great move. Forceful move from McLaughlin. Malukas will try and respond. I met Kyle Kirkwood in the Foyt car. Roman Grosjean's trying to get into that battle too. Currently in sixth, right behind the 14, but now it's Pelot with Simon Pagano all over his gearbox. Boy, that is amazing that Pagano getting into the back of Pelot there, that the two of them didn't end up into the wall. Now Malukas is regrouped. He's deep on the brakes, coming up on the back of McLaughlin. You can see how serious McLaughlin is about trying to win this motor race. That was a forceful move. He gets by Malukas. Now he's got his sight set on Pagano and Palo. Everybody seems to have gotten through the trouble zone we had on the last restart through the 678 complex as they blast back over the bridge and head down into turn nine. Pagano's right there. You Big know he's run. all over the push to pass right now. Backs out of it. Such a tricky brake zone over there. You're kinked. Varied surfaces that you have to run over as you're getting on the brake. The car's laterally loaded. Elevation as well. You get some vertical load in the car as you hit the brakes for turn nine. The, the two leaders right now, very similar on push to pass. 110 seconds for Pelot, 114 for Simon Pagano. Gotta laugh at the two rookies. They barely have enough left. They've been pretty excited on the button <laughs> so far. So they're pretty level set. Malukas at 62, Kirkwood at 54. And, and you get 200 seconds of push to pass. 150 so, actually 150 for this, this race dip. 150, you can use it in bursts of 15 seconds. And you can see yeah, the rookies definitely use it a bit more, but the veterans burning up a a couple seconds on these opening laps of the restart. Look at this, look at this, between second and third. Pagano and McLaughlin, it's getting closer. Pelot's been relieved a little bit. McLaughlin's got the bit between his teeth, guys. We've seen the dominance of this car through practice and qualifying. He is very keen to get up to Alex Pelot and have a crack at the lead. He is, but he also looks to be measured in terms of when he's going to make that decision. Is it going to be on this lap? You see the blue lights on the steering wheel for a second. That's the push to pass. Dave. The Dex driver is comfortably on pace and just studying, ready to pounce. And when talking to him about how confident he was this weekend, he said, last year when I came here, I was down in the dumps. And when you look at the numbers, you can understand why. The five races leading to Nashville, he had an average finish of 17th. That was as a rookie. The five races coming to this race this year, average finish very much better. Here about we go. Half in eighth and looking for the pass now, Lee. Got it done, Dave, on the inside. We see Roman Grosjean get around the 14 of Kyle Kirkwood to get back into the top five. So the two raciest cars on the track, McLaughlin and Grosjean, are the two highest qualifiers. Here comes Malukas up the inside. Beautiful pass from David Malukas. Timed it perfectly. Didn't give an inch more room than he needed to get around the left rear of Simon Pagano. Some great driving from the young boy from Illinois. I love how aggressive he's been here, Dan. Yeah. It is not taken any more abuse from the veterans. The rookie is starting to flex his muscles. R Romain Grosjean in the DHL Honda. He got by Kyle Kirkwood. Now he is working on Simon Pagenaud. I wonder if Pagenaud's got an issue because he's just going back too rapidly. He was right there with the race leader. Colton Hurd on the inside of turn one. That's how you get it done, nicely done. He was patient but forceful and moves on through. And he should be able to make quick work of Simon Pagano. We know pagano has been struggling, so if Colton can clear Pagano, he'll be going after Rosenquist for seventh, still with 30 laps to go. You want to be the first to pit last to make sure that you are not in the danger zone and you essentially do exactly what Alex Pelot had done to get that track position on the first round of stops. But if you pit too early, you got to save too much fuel and on a track that can always give us a yellow at any time, Renus VK almost causes it, goes wide in the overshoot, but is able to continue. Now he was having a good day up until that point. What happened to the Dutch driver? Christian Lungard, first one to dump in. Scott Dixon, Will Power. This puts the rest of the field in check. You cover. Do they come in right away now? He's Kevin Lee, Kev. 
Several are coming in. We see Christian Lungard making his final stop. He got a quick call there, wanting to make sure it didn't go yellow, likely. We're right on the opening edge of the window. Will Power also right in front of him. No movement yet in the NTT data team for the leader, Alex Pelo. He's still out for now. He stalled. He stalled. Oh, no. There was a big delay leaving. We saw Will Power's hands go up in the air as he races Renus VK out of pit lane. I wonder what the issue was there, Kev. And Reen is going to get him on the outlap. We know we had the emergency mode issue with Will Power before. Perhaps there was an issue with him trying to find first gear. There's a neutral blockout on the car as we see Jimmy Johnson now fighting him into turn four. And now decisions to be made from Pelo and McLaughlin, Malukas, Grosjean. Got to think they're going to come to pit lane this time as we see the replay for the number 12 Verizon team right rear. And then trouble getting it into gear. And the caution is out. This is a huge break for the cars that have just pitted. Everything's going to change now. My goodness. So they were able to get the United Rentals Honda back out for Graham Rahal. But unfortunately, stuck behind him. he's back in the wall. So there goes the 45 of Jack Harvey. And VK. Got VK is in the back of Graham Rahal. And guess who might cycle towards the front here? I think it's going to be Scott Dixon. Question is, are the pits, is the full course caution out? Yes, it is. Scott Dixon, Will Power, Christian Lundgaard. And James, even, you said it, you want to make the first, be the first to make your last stop. Here's what happened. And here's why. Graham Rahal just all by himself in a turn four. We know that Renus VK was fresh out of the pits on cold tires. Maybe not enough time to react to the 15 in the wall. Do you see the both fronts lock up? Will Power wow. was so lucky to avoid that. Wow, and Jimmy Johnson as well. But and look at that blue and orange PNC car. That is Scott Dixon with an ear-to-ear -ear smile. He knows what a massive stroke of luck he has just been dealt here as VK, who had such a great day going, like Graham Rahal earlier, has to try to drag that front wing stuck under the race car all the way around to the pits at a oh. very busy pit road. Boy, you could see how tight it was. Just a lap too late for Grosjean. They were calling him in when that caution came out. Car very maneuverable, though. He's happy with it. Last set of sticker fires to him. Primaries going on, Dave. Third place, Malukas is in. Top of your screen, bottom of your screen. Second place, oh, slow, slow stop for Scott McLaughlin. Will this cost him the day, Kevin? Pelo moved to the front by the timing of the caution. This time it hurt him. A win may be taken away from him. Best case scenario is he's probably going to cycle to sixth or so. He's big out, and look at this race up pit lane. They're all stacked up. Ready to go back racing in the big machine Music City Grand Prix with Joseph Newgarden at the front. There's the green. A Away he goes. A few cars out of line. I look at Kyle Kirkwood. That one's going to be under investigation. You see the 60, oh, the 06, sorry, of Simon, or uh, Elio Castro Neves, lap car in between Scott Dixon and Joseph Newgarden. Everyone gets through nine. Boy, and look who's buried in the pack. The boys on pit road mentioned that Scott McLaughlin has got to do some digging, some big digging. Oh, look at this, Kirkwood. three wide, three wide. Kirkwood on the inside. Kirkwood with a kiss of Harvey who gets into Colton Herta. Now Herta's teammate Grosjean in the yellow and red car up the inside. Is Herta going to let off? Absolutely not. That's going to open the door for Scott McLaughlin on the 28. He goes through on Roman Grosjean as well. Elbows out, but everybody keeps it off the wall and out of the runoffs. We are still green. Alex Pelot under big threat from David Malukas. The battle between Power and Pelot continues. Here comes Pelot to the outside. He's going to be on the preferred well, breaking sure. line, and yeah, yeah easily oh, let go. Almost wow. lost it there on that huge bump, driver's right. See the car move around? That was unreal. So Pelot still in the mix here, fighting as hard as he can. As we go back and see a replay, Will Power oh. leading as Polo has left front wing damage from that contact. That'll make it difficult for Polo to be strong down the finish. That's just that's just a that's an unforced error from Alex Polo. There was no movement from the 12. He just drove right into the back of him. Here comes Colton Herta. Meanwhile, with Malukas Herta passing for fifth position. Herta's in the top five from a lap down to the top five for Andretti Autosport. Oh, oh boy, no. the two rookies who were featuring today. These guys had such a magical run going. 
what has happened between David Malukas and Kyle Kirkwood. So Kirkwood goes for the move on the inside. Oof. How do you read that one, Hinch? Gonna, gonna need to see it a couple times. I mean, it's a late move, there's no doubt about it, but he was there-ish. I mean, the deal all day long is you've got to get level. You've got to get shoulder to shoulder right. to get the outside driver to back off. Kirkwood was 70% I don't, 70 think, oh, I don't there. think you can say shoulder to shoulder at that point. Of the, that point of the corner, Malukas is already turning in. He's committed. Yeah. His eyes are looking forward at the apex. You can't check your mirror by that point. So, yeah, you'd probably have to wait that a little bit more towards the, uh, towards the 14. Seven laps now, eight laps of yellow since New Garden last pitted. So yep. he's still about, call it 10 to 14 shy. And there's there the is. answer. New Garden knows he can't make it. Make it. He ducks off to pit lane. Four tires and fuel, Dave. Yep, it was never going to happen, Townsend. So he comes to pit road now. These are the scuffed primary tires that were a little bit older. They'll put them on here for the end and see what Joseph can make of this. Remember, start of the day, 32 behind Will Power. He now gives up the as they run championship lead. To see what they can salvage at the end of the day here in Nashville. With 11 laps to go, let's go here in Nashville, Tennessee to see if we can finish off this big machine, Music City Grand Prix. There's the green, here we go. It was a great lineup and a late green flag, but a great jump from Scott Dixon out front. Big moves, big moves, McLaughlin on Herder. A lot of wheel checking going on. Grosjean goes off the back of his teammate, Colton Herder. Rossi's in the mix. Ericsson on the inside of Herder now. Grosjean's gonna get him down into turn 11. Does he have a, maybe a bit of a problem? Oh, and Grosjean goes for another one. Marcus Ericsson. Great move, and right. then Herder's able to pay it back on Ericsson. Somebody said tire pressures. I'm guessing somebody might have a tire going down. Is that Ericsson? It, Does Rossi have it? So much side-by-side -side contact that's happened in the last few quarters. It's tough to know. Great move from Roman Grosjean to get himself into the top five. You see that damage on the front of Alex Pelot's car. He's going to be Roman's next victim. But all clean up front for Scott Dixon. They have 10 laps to settle in here, study each other, and try to make something happen. Here comes Newgard on his teammate. And Harvey lines up for a shot as well. Power unable to respond, unable to do anything about that. He had to let Pagano go around too. That was difficult. It's Joseph Newgarden all over the back of Erickson. Marcus Erickson. He's got a problem. Erickson has no drive as he falls way Stay back. Emergency mode. And this will have huge championship implications for Erickson. And look at who's getting racy on the bridge. Jimmy Johnson and Renus VK. Felix Rosenquist lining up Will Power now into turn nine. I wonder if maybe somebody got into the back of Marcus Erickson and has a gear selection problem like we've seen so many times today. That's what it was, Hinch. Yes, that's exactly it. This is a monster day as far as championship points for Scott Dixon. He came into this race 38 points behind and in fourth place. If he stays where he is and wins this Nashville street race, he's going to go to second in the championship and only six points out of the lead. But he's got a young Danish driver who's not going to let him have it easily. Lungard has the pace, Hinch. Here comes Lungard to the bridge as Dixon stretches things out. Dixon, 55 seconds. Lungard, only seven of push to pass. I was going to say he's got the pace, but he does not have the advantage on push to pass as Roman Grosjean tries to line up Alex Pelot and Colin Herta still in the fight for a top five. Grosjean's got plenty left. He's got 74 seconds and so too does Scott McLaughlin. McLaughlin's got 69 seconds left. It's two Hondas leading a Chevy. Scott Dixon of Chip Ganassi Racing, Christian Lundgaard of Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan Racing, and then Team Penske's oh, Jimmy Johnson. He had a big crash here last year and he's had one this year. A crash, a crash. Guys, eight laps to go with the yellow flag coming out. This should be a pretty quick one for a one-car incident. This is going to make a short dash to the finish. Middle of the road. Looks like a lot of contact as Eric Cowden, the race engineer, has his head in his Cars hands. Destroyed. Let's see what happened. Listen. Boy, the back end started to go really early there. Yeah, on oh the bumps, boy. upset it. That's a big hit. Ooh. Huge right side impact. We're ready to go racing. 
with just five laps to go and Dixon blasts away. Dixon didn't hang about. Oh, Rossi does not want to let Newgarden by, but Newgarden's going to be able to force his way. Look at Newgarden pass three cars in one corner. Oh, and Grosjean is in the wall. He didn't get all the way past Roman Grosjean and contact sends the 28 into the wall. That is devastating. And then it's me, right? And then it's me. And is Newgarden's car okay? It doesn't matter. All he's going to have to do is go around under caution for a few more laps. I'm not sure we'll get this one going in time. Maybe it'll well, be they a... cleaned up the last one. was a huge shunt with Jimmy Johnson. That was with seven to go. That so was pretty quick, yeah. Let's see. AMR safety team on the scene. Out comes Grosjean. Now's the time to hustle. Get that hook in. Drag that thing off the track. Joseph Newgarden got a great jump. Alexander Rossi and him running into each other Watch a bit. Newgarden. And he launched from behind the 27, trying to go by the 26 and 28 all in one go. He was there, James. He was all the way up alongside Grosjean. I just can't tell what happened after that. Here we go. Let's see this angle. Right here. I don't know. I, I think the Tiger 2 went in with a little bit too much speed. You know, there's no way Roman saw him coming. He was three cars back when Roman turned in. Look left. Oh, man. He was there. He was there, but he moved it. He moved into him. You know, I don't think Joseph kept it tight enough. I mean, where could Grosjean go at that point? It's Nashville, though. At his <laughs> Joe News house. That's well, okay. <laughs> no, I mean, listen. And the red I don't flag flies oh, down. There you go. Sorry to interrupt. There we go. And, more problems for Marcus Erickson in the number eight Husky chocolate machine. We saw the gear selection issues he's had. It looks like it's stuck in gear right now. Couple of Kiwis at the front of this field. This is how McLaughlin followed Dixon home for that one, two in Texas. First time ever that two New Zealanders had finished first and second in IndyCar. Let's go! Look at Pelot in the blue NTT data car on the inside of Lungard. An expert jump from Alex Pelot to take that third position. And here comes Rossi and Herta muscling their way past the rookie Lungard. I'm getting so nervous watching all those cars drive through all the kitty litter on the exit of turn nine here. But great job from Alexander Rossi and Colin Herta both around Christian Lundgaard. Lundgaard, Lundgaard get by, he got by Newgarden with those fresh tires. Looked like Rosenquist almost got into the back of Lundgaard as there's side-by-side -side contact. I think that's Will Power and maybe Castroneves or Pagino back there going wheel to wheel. One to go, you saw the white flag. They're on their way home, less than two miles. One to go. Which New Zealander's gonna do it? They're Is it Scott Dixon or Scott McLaughlin? They'll both be on the push to pass. They have plenty to burn. Scott Dixon got the advantage down into turn four. There'll be no passing from here through at least turn seven. Maybe Scott McLaughlin could be brave into eight, but it's all going to be down into turn nine, Townsend. What kind of jump can Scott McLaughlin get off of this corner? The right-hander, how early can he get to power? He's had the best power down all weekend. A good, not great jump for McLaughlin, but he's in the draft if. This is it. This is the opportunity for McLaughlin. Here he comes on the Chip Ganassi racer. Is he close enough? How big will he send it? Can he? He's too far back. You can still do it into turn 11 if you're close enough. He's not really thinking championship. He's thinking race win. Scott Dixon's the one that's got a benefit here from the points. The PNC Bank Honda, it was a Ganassi victory last year. Will it be a Ganassi victory this year? After having such an eventful Whoa. start to the race, McLaughlin tries to drag race Dixon and can't do it. Scott Dixon wins well the done. Big Machine Music job, City man. Grand Prix. Holy smokes, well done, guys. Fan of the time. Elation all around on the nine stand. What a drive, what a result. The two Scots drag racing out of turn 11 to the line. How about that? And such a classic Dixon day. Scott Dixon has now become the second winningest driver in IndyCar history. That's number 53. And he might have taken a major step towards championship number seven. Scott, there are so many places we can go as we chat. But let's just talk about the weekend. I got the sense that you weren't super pleased with how things were going. How improbable is this win? Well, you know, I think the tough thing all weekend is that I knew the PNC bank number nine was, was super fast. You know, we proved that in the warm-up. We just didn't have many consecutive laps. But kudos to the team. We had a big crash there. It took half the floor off the car. We had to take four turns of front wing out, so we had no grip. And then... I think we did about 45 or 50 laps on that last set of tires. So the last stop, we didn't even take tires. So huge credit to Firestone as well. But, uh, oh, man, Nashville's so awesome.
Punch the Bomberito Automotive Group 500, Saturday, August 20th at 6 p.m. on USA Network.